Hello my data engineering buddies, I hope you all are doing really good. So in today's video, I am going to talk about what these top tier and high paying companies are expecting from the aspiring data engineers with respect to modern technical skills. So emphasize on this word, very important to understand because a lot of things have changed after this AI boom. So that has to be integrated in your data engineering tech stack and roles and responsibilities. Plus what these companies are expecting to sustain in their workspace and what they are expecting to crack their interviews. And we all know the data engineering is the most versatile and high paying job profile. That is the reason there are a lot of things which are supposed to be learned. And when it comes to the learning path, if you are still stuck on the old school tech stack of data engineering like the Spark, Python, SQL, Airflow and few things here and there, then you cannot stand out. There are a lot of things needs to be covered with respect to the modern technical skills to stand out in the top 1% category of the data engineer. So in this video, I will give you that phase level detailed step by step learning curve how you can proceed from the very beginning. It doesn't matter what your background, even if you don't know the D of data engineering, this is the complete path for you. With the blind eyes, you can just start following it without juggling here and there over the internet. And I can assure you, I can assure you that within a couple of months, you will see the results. And why I am saying it? Because I haven't prepared this learning path based on some random chat GPT suggestion. It is all about my eight years of experience in the data engineering space. If you know me, you know that, right? I'm working this long in the data engineering space. Plus over the four years, I am teaching thousands of data engineers and they are successfully placed in the top tech companies as well with super amazing salary packages. So they have followed it. They have seen the result and whatever I have learned and whatever I have learned over the period of eight years in different companies, I cracked the man level of companies, had multiple offers, worked at multiple places and based on that experience, I have prepared it. So watch it till the very end, save it, share it and you will see the results. So this is the learning path, which is completely basic to advance. Again, as I said, if you are coming from any type of background, this is the learning path for you. And if your tech stack, basically the cloud part is Azure, you are pretty much sorted. And when I say AWS data engineer, Azure data engineer, AWS data engineer, I always consider it in this aspect. A data engineer who is specialized using the AWS, a data engineer who is specialized using GCP or Azure. So even if you are calling yourself a top notch Azure data engineer or anything, first your prime focus should be learning the whole core aspect of the data engineering. Whatever tech stack, tech skills are there, then your primary focus should be learning that particular cloud platform. because. These cloud platforms haven't done something extraordinary, right? With respect to the framework development, specifically, let's say for data engineering. Example is Airflow. What is Airflow? It says the open source orchestration framework. We all know that, right? Similarly, Spark, open source distributed computation framework. So Airflow is available as an open source service. Now Azure as a cloud platform created a managed environment where in just a couple of clicks, your Airflow is set up. So that is what they are doing. So as a data engineer, what should be my priority? First, I should learn the core of data engineering, how to work with Airflow and how to use it. Similarly, Spark, we know that it is a open source computing framework. So Azure has given, so Azure has a service like Azure Synapse, where you will be getting the Spark environment within just couple of clicks. So that is how things are done. So prioritize your learning in that way. So let's go ahead with every phase and I will explain and to be very honest, phase five is my favorite one. So watch it till the very end. What is exciting there? So in the phase one, right, your foundation should be pretty much strong. Everything will be starting from this point. So programming language, Python, Scala, Java, Python, always preferred one. I have recommended it. Then when we are talking about the top tier companies, high paying companies, right? You definitely going to face the DSA type of portion in the interviews. Good thing is the level will be easy medium. Don't spend your unnecessary time learning graph and trees, hard level of questions that won't be needed. I even cracked the offers from the Google. They ask very simple array related question for the data engineering profile. So prepare yourself in that way. And these are the important uh, data structures, specifically in the DSA part. Make sure you are covering it. 
Now coming to the Linux command and shell scripting, most of the time you will be dealing or working on the server side, right? Here and there. So make sure you are pretty much good with the Linux command, how to use it, shell scripting. Then DBMS concept, right? How to use the database structure, how to work with the database management and system, different concepts of it that needs to be covered. Then here you can pick any of it, right? When I mention a lot of things, comma separated, make sure any one of it you are picking up. So working with the uh, transactional databases, MySQL, Postgres, you can pick anything. And SQL gonna play very important role. We know that it is a bread and butter for all the data professionals, right? Similarly for the data engineering as well, you need the advanced level knowledge for the SQL part as well, right? So make sure to cover it. Then coming to the NoSQL databases part, here again you can pick MongoDB Cassandra or any other NoSQL database you have worked on, you can pick that one, right? So this is what you are going to cover in the phase one. Now before moving ahead, I want to announce a very important thing for which you were waiting for a very long, long time, right? So after 14 months of long waiting period, I have launched my another complete data engineering with AWS 5.0 bootcamp basic to advance this is launched and enrollments are open since there are very limited seat you all know that i take the live classroom programs where teaching everything about the data engineering from basic to advanced in the live classes over the zoom itself so very limited seats limited number of people in the cohort so enrollments are started and live classes starting from 2nd of August. So admissions closing really, really soon. You can check the link in the description to enroll today. And you can also visit www.growdataskills.com. And if you're enrolling today only, then there is a very special discount offer code in the description. You can use it. And if you have any query, any doubt, then give us a call or WhatsApp on this given number. So you all know in this data engineering program, I am going to cover everything from basic to advanced. Again, you don't need to know anything. Just a basic Python is the prerequisite of this program and you can see on your screen that what I'm going to teach everything in just 3.5 months starting from your SQL, Big Data, Hadoop, Hive, NoSQL databases, Kafka, KSQL DB and coming to the Spark, Databricks, Snowflake, Airflow, Spark Streaming, Data Warehousing, Data Modeling, Azure Cloud completely end to end. All the services touching upon very important services like Azure Data Factory, Azure Synapse, Azure DevOps and many others. Then I have added the new modules here. That is the interesting point like Apache Iceberg, Apache Hoodie, Apache Trino and I am going to add a very exclusive and not so revealed as of now AI flavor as well. I will be creating a very good level of industry projects where you will see the integration of AI as well, which we haven't brought in any of our bootcamp as of now for the data engineering. So that is the level I am going to bring. You will be getting dedicated placement assistance with respect to the resume, LinkedIn profile making, knock profile making, quizzes, assignments, their solutions, interview preparation guide for every single topic we are going to teach, then live doubt support and offline doubt support in the private Discord community and the job opportunities from our alumni network and my professional LinkedIn network itself. And after completing this bootcamp thoroughly, you will be getting the certificate of completion as well. I don't have any doubt about the modern technical skills we are covering in our data engineering program because they are the most demanding one. And you can see those results on your screen that how our students are bagging massive, massive job offers from all the Fortune 100, 500 companies, including Google, Salesforce, Intuit, Walmart, and many others. So now this is your chance. If you want to start your journey in the data engineering, enroll as soon as possible, just few seats left. So now let's talk about the phase two, what you need to cover. So here, as I said, big data, fundamental and Hadoop, Apache Hive. This comes to the warehousing part. Uh, so I would recommend when you complete your data warehousing and data modeling fundamentals, again, you can come back onto this one. So Apache Hive going to play important role. Then Apache Kafka for the streaming part, mostly in your streaming applications, Apache Kafka will come into the picture. Distributed computation framework, right? Here we all know, right? From the data engineering front, the Apache Spark gonna play super, 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 super important role. So make sure to cover it. Then Trino, distributed SQL query engine. And that is what I'm covering in my bootcamp as well. 
and Apache Flink for real time data pipelines. It is optional and maybe your advanced level learning phase of the data engineering there you can learn it. Then coming to the data warehousing data modeling round. This is actually a very important round for these type of companies, right? I have interviewed at Google, Uber and these companies. So they have a even dedicated round for this particular thing itself, right? Here they will be focusing more on the practical case studies, giving you uh, like, can you design the data warehouse for the Zoom car and what kind of business, uh, let's say KPIs we can solve based on your data model, data warehouse model, optimize it, lot of cross questions around it. So that is how it will be. And then and most demanded enterprise level data warehousing framework like the Snowflake, right? So this is what you need to cover. Then coming to the phase three. So here, once you are pretty much good with this spark, then Databricks, right? This has become a norm. Mostly, even if you talk about Azure, then Azure Databricks comes into the picture. So that level of understanding with respect to Databricks would be needed. Then open table formats. These are super important as well uh, because you must have heard about the different type of architectures, Medellin architecture, lake house architecture. And when it comes to work with the transactional level kind of operations on the data, which is stored at rest, like the S3, ADLS or the Google storage, then these open table formats plays very important role like iceberg, hoodie, delta tables coming along with the data bricks itself. So you need to learn it. Apache Airflow for all your orchestration part. Now, when you start like writing your Spark applications or any pipeline you are building, we all know that data quality plays a very important role. So what all things you can learn with respect to apply data quality checks in your application itself. So Soda Cloud is there. You can explore it. Colibra is there. You can explore it and open source AWS PyDQ library that is also used for applying the data quality checks. So you can uh, look into it. Then testing part, right? This is very important. No matter what kind of uh, you can say application you are building, writing unit testing and the um, integration testing, smoke testing, all those are different testing patterns. So make sure you start building a good habit of writing the test cases in any of your data pipeline you are creating, right? So make sure to consider it. Then coming to the phase four and in the phase four, you would first need to focus on your primary cloud tech stack and here our focus is on the Azure data engineering, right? So here, these are important listed uh, services which you need to learn if your tech stack or cloud platform is Azure as a data engineer. So blob storage, RBAC, ADLS, Delta Lake storage, Azure functions, virtual machines, logic apps, Azure service bus like queues and topics for streaming related thing, Azure Key Vault for securing our credentials, Stream Data Analytics, Azure Event Hub, Azure Cosmos DB, Azure Data Factory, Azure SQL Database, Azure Synapse, Azure DevOps. These all things you must need to cover if you are going ahead with the Azure Cloud Platform for your data engineering journey. Then whatever pipeline you are building, it's deployment from development to stage to the production through automated CI CD, right? For that one, you need to focus on all these things like it, GitHub and the commands you must know GitHub Actions, Terraform, Docker, Kubernetes, Jenkins coming under your CI CD part. Then alerting and monitoring uh, for the data observability part specifically. So Datadoc, PagerDuty, Grafana, ELK, TechStack, Prometheus, these things you need to include and cover under the alerting and monitoring part. And now in the beginning, I mentioned this phase five, which is my favorite one as well. And in the beginning as well, I mentioned one more thing uh, that after the AI boom, a lot of things have changed. And this is what I'm going to consider in my this new 5.0 bootcamp as well, that how you can bring the AI related thing into the picture. And that is the part, even though you are a data engineer, do not ignore these things from now onwards, right? Because after one, two years, you will see data engineer job opportunities and the job roles, they will be expecting this knowledge from the candidates for sure. So start knowing about the LLMs, right? Start using them, try to integrate it in your any data pipeline projects here and there, what you can do, right? So understand it, different LLMs like large language models are there, OpenAI, Claude, Gemini, DeepSeek, Llama. 
so learn about it get that understanding maybe they are not getting used in your data engineering projects right now very frequently but at least even to code right we are using chat gpt and other things so it's better idea at least to do it from now onwards right learn it understand it how they are getting used how they are working then you should be really proficient enough nowadays with the uh, ai assisted uh, coding frameworks you can say uh, so cursor vibe coding like who can expedite your coding process itself so make sure you are well versed with it how to use it how they are working so that you can leverage them in your day to day task and then agentic ai right nowadays uh, on the internet you must have seen lot of people are just talking about the ai agents building those ai automated flows so agentic ai will definitely solve a really good cases around your data engineering pipelines as well and even let's say whatever data you have generated based on your uh, data pipeline then maybe after that you want to take some post actions and that is the part where you can create your agents who can do certain operations and these ai agents might help you in your pipelines as well if you want to automate some processes there so use it like work on the data pipelines create something and then come on to this part how to even leverage these llms and the agentic ai how we can create any type of uh, ai agent who is integrated with our data pipelines last but not the least which is going to be very important your projects you cannot get away from it you cannot ignore it doesn't matter what is the situation whatever you are learning without your projects and do not just rely on the capstone project just uh, like explore explore different tech blog pages of different companies look at their use cases what they have built maybe not on that scale at least at a minimum scale basic scale you can try to replicate those kind of project on your own try to use this modern tech stack do not just create simple airflow pipeline spark pipeline this and that as i said it is not going to help at all okay so yeah that is what i wanted to discuss and wanted to share this structured phase wise learning path to crack the high paying companies for the data engineer role i'm pretty sure it will help you in your journey and uh, if you find it informative then make sure to give a like in this big number and share it with your fellow friends who want to start their data engineering journey and don't forget to enroll in my complete data engineering with azure 5.0 bootcamp with basic to advanced where i'm going to teach everything from the scratch all my experience modern technical skills of the data engineering with the industry grade projects live classes starting from 2nd of august very limited seats left so check out the link and enroll as soon as possible you can also visit www.growdataskills.com and a very special discount offer for all of you if you are just enrolling today that is given in the description as well and if you have any query any question then make sure to give us a call or whatsapp on this given number i will help you directly okay so i'll see you guys in the live classes very soon till then bye bye